Thank you. So I will be discussing the demethylated metabolites of oxycodone and hydrocodone in human hair and nail specimens. Testing for drugs in hair and nail is beneficial because hair and nail are considered reservoir matrices. This means that drugs accumulate there, so it can lengthen our detection window to about three to six months. As was mentioned earlier, drugs are incorporated into hair and nail in a few different ways. When drugs are ingested, they become present in our sweat and our blood. Sweat from our scalp and our hands deposits drug into our hair and nails, while blood carries drugs into the hair and nail and it gets incorporated as they grow. Hair simply grows straight out from the root, while nail grows horizontally from the nail matrix as well as vertically from the nail bed. Additionally, drugs can be incorporated passively through environmental exposure. Smoke and fumes in the air can deposit drug into the hair, while handling pills and powders with our hands can deposit drug into our nails. This, however, can be a disadvantage of hair and nail testing. For instance, at our laboratory we had a client who happened to be a pharmacist who was suspected of abusing oxycodone. We tested his hair, and we did indeed find that he tested positive for oxycodone. However, his defense was that he handles these pills every day, and so he tested positive not because he took the drug, but because he was exposed to it. Unfortunately, we were not able to confirm or refute this statement. So this type of scenario was the inspiration behind this study. We wanted to find a better way to prove that opiates were ingested instead of just being due to environmental exposure. So I will be discussing the prescription opioid problem, brief drug metabolism, and the results of this study. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, prescription opioids account for the greatest amount of prescription drugs of abuse. From 2001 to 2014, there was a 3.4 fold increase in the number of deaths due to prescription opiates. The main consequence of abusing prescription opioids is depressed breathing. This causes hypoxia, which is reduced oxygen flow to the brain, and that causes coma, seizures, permanent brain damage, and ultimately death. Oxycodone is a Schedule II narcotic that is available as a prescription, such as an Oxycontin. In the body, it has two major metabolic pathways. The O-demethylation pathway, as it sounds, is the removal of a methyl group from the oxygen, and we get oxymorphone. The N-demethylated pathway is the removal of a methyl group from the nitrogen, and we get noroxycodone. In the body, the N-demethylation pathway is the major metabolic pathway. So we would expect noroxycodone to be present in higher concentrations than oxymorphone. However, the presence of either one of these two metabolites, along with the presence of the parent drug, oxycodone, can indicate that the drug was ingested instead of just being due to environmental exposure. Oxymorphone, however, is available as a prescription, such as an opana. Therefore, its presence does not necessarily rule out environmental exposure. Noroxycodone is not available as a prescription. Additionally, we obtained an oxycodone tablet and tested it for the presence of noroxycodone. On the left, we have the drug and internal standard from the calibrator, and on the right, we have the drug and internal standard from that oxycodone tablet. And as you can see from the upper right-hand chromatogram, there was no noroxycodone present in that oxycodone tablet. Therefore, to the best of our knowledge, noroxycodone only exists when it is the product of metabolism by the human body. Similarly, hydrocodone is a Schedule II opiate that is also available as a prescription. It also has O and N demethylated pathways. The O demethylation pathway gives us hydromorphone, and the N demethylated pathway gives us norhydrocodone. Once again, the N-demethylation pathway is the major metabolic pathway, so we would expect norhydrocodone to be present in higher concentrations than hydromorphone. But the presence of either metabolite can indicate that the drug was ingested. Hydromorphone is available as a prescription, and norhydrocodone is not. Unfortunately, we were not able to obtain a hydrocodone pill to test for the presence of norhydrocodone. So for this study, we took hair and nail specimen, powdered them, wa I'm sorry, washed them, then powdered them, then incubated them in hydrochloric acid overnight. 
We then subjected them to a solid phase extraction procedure and analyzed them via LC-MS-MS. This actually is the current method that we use when we test for drugs in hair, or for opiates in hair and nail. In our current method, we already test for hydrocodone, hydromorphone, oxycodone, and oxymorphone. What we are looking to do is incorporate norhydrocodone and noroxycodone into our already existing method. So far, we have not done any quantitation validation, so this is strictly a qualitative study right now. A total of 92 hair and nail specimens that had previously been confirmed for opiates were used in this study. 51 of those samples were positive for oxycodone, and this chart shows which metabolites were present in those samples. In the blue region, we have the specimens that were positive for the parent drug, oxycodone, but they were negative for both metabolites. In the green region, we have the specimens positive for the parent, oxycodone, and positive for the metabolite, noroxycodone, but they were negative for oxymorphone. And in the purple region, we have the specimens positive for the parent, oxycodone, and they were positive for both metabolites. There were no specimen that were positive for oxymorphone, but negative for noroxycodone. So if we wanted to look at the specimens that were positive for noroxycodone, it would be the green region combined with the purple region. But the specimens positive for oxymorphone is just the purple region. Therefore, there are a greater number of samples positive for noroxycodone than for oxymorphone. Additionally, we looked at the parent drug concentration for each group. And what we found was that the lowest parent drug concentration occurred in the blue region, which is where no metabolites were detected. Sorry, that's there. An intermediate parent drug concentration occurred when only noroxycodone was detected. And the highest parent drug concentration occurred when both metabolites were detected. So this can suggest to us that in order to be able to detect noroxycodone, we need an intermediate parent drug concentration. However, in order to detect oxymorphone, we tended to need higher parent drug concentrations. Those same specimens were also tested for hydrocodone, and 63 samples were positive. In the blue region, we had the specimens positive only for the parent drug, hydrocodone, and they were negative for both metabolites. In the green region, we had the specimens positive for the parent, hydrocodone, and the metabolite, nor hydrocodone, but they were negative for hydromorphone. In the purple region, we had the specimens positive for the parent, as well as both metabolites. And in the red region, we had the specimens positive for the parent, hydrocodone, and the metabolite, hydromorphone, but they were negative for nor hydrocodone. And there were two specimens that fell into this group. So, once again, if we wanted to look at the specimens positive for norhydrocodone, it would be the green region combined with the purple region. And the specimens positive for hydromorphone is the purple region combined with the red region. So, once again, we see that the N-demethylated metabolite gives us a greater number of positive samples. We also looked at the parent drug concentration for each group and found a very similar trend. The lowest parent drug concentration occurred when no metabolites were detected. An intermediate parent drug concentration occurred when only norhydrocodone was detected. And the highest parent drug concentrations occurred when, hydro when both metabolites were detected. So once again, this can indicate that in order to be able to detect norhydrocodone, we need an intermediate parent drug concentration. But in order to detect hydromorphone, we tended to need higher parent drug concentrations. This red region, however, does not follow this trend because we see hydromorphone at pretty low concentrations of the parent drug. This discrepancy can be explained through environmental exposure. Since both hydrocodone and hydromorphone are available as prescriptions, and since um, there were only two samples and the concentrations were relatively low, it's very possible that these specimens were due to environmental exposure. So in addition to there being a greater number of samples positive for the N-demethylated metabolite, both noroxycodone and norhydrocodone had greater concentrations than oxymorphone and hydromorphone. On this chart, the vertical lines represent the ranges of concentrations for each analyte. The filled in boxes represent the interquaternary ranges. The horizontal line through each box indicates the median, and the tan dots indicate the average concentrations. 
I also zoomed in on the oxymorphone peak, and that's what you see in the upper right-hand corner. So we compared the noroxycodone concentrations to the oxymorphone concentrations using the Wilcoxon test, and we discovered that the p-value was less than 0 .001. This indicates a strong statistical significance that noroxycodone existed at higher concentrations than oxymorphone. Now this chart includes all the specimens that were positive for oxycodone. However, there were specimens that were positive for oxycodone, but negative for both metabolites. In this scenario, we are not sure whether these samples tested positive due to environmental exposure or due to ingestion. So if we remove these ambiguous samples, we are left with data that only comes from samples that we know were due to ingestion. And as you can see, the data does not change that much. The same analysis was done for hydrocodone, and we compared the norhydrocodone concentrations to the hydromorphone concentrations using a Wilcoxon test. And once again, we found that the p-value was less than 0 .001, indicating a strong statistical significance that norhydrocodone exists at higher concentrations than hydromorphone. And once again, if we remove those ambiguous samples, we are left with samples that we know for sure were due to ingestion. And once again, the data looks essentially the same. So in conclusion, norhydrocodone and noroxycodone were detected in a greater number of samples than hydromorphone and oxymorphone. Also, norhydrocodone and noroxycodone had higher concentrations than hydromorphone and oxymorphone. Therefore, when determining exposure over ingestion, the N-demethylated metabolites are a better indicator and give us greater confidence than the O-demethylated metabolites. So all of this basically has been a proof of concept, and so we do plan to continue to fully validate this method.